Good evening, everyone, or good noon, as I've been saying lately. Hey, I woke up late, so it's good morning still. He slept like 12 hours last night. Well, he kept me up for 23. You kept yourself up. Ah, there we are. Watch the video. All right, I'll go ahead and share. Yep. I'm trying something new today, so... Hopefully it works without getting messed up. <laughs> well, and I hope uh, everybody's having a good Memorial Day. Well, ours has started out okay. We, we slept in, which was... Unusual for us. So I'm happy with that. Oh. Trying to get to the right place. Yep. <laughs> like post, 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 but you gotta find where you're supposed to post at. Yeah, there you go. I found it. That's the big thing, though. Uh, so, let me get the other thing on. You know, it's a little odd watching yourself actually on. I don't like watching or hearing myself after we do these. Okay. It's very hard for me to look. I have shared. It has been shared. Oh, I'm trying to get my stuff going here. So. Okay. So we are continuing our series, uh, Pots, Pans, and Prophecies. Um, I've really enjoyed it so far. Yeah, um, me too. It helps you get a perspective on actually what you're supposed to be looking for. Where you fit into everything, really. Yeah, yeah. And we're talking about uh, Mary, the mm -hmm. mother of Jesus, and... Let me not get it confused with Easter again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were dressed like an Easter egg floss. This is, uh, it, it is the story of um, the promise of Jesus' birth, which is Christmas. Um, but it's not exactly a Christmas-themed thing. No. Because we're talking about the promise um, and Mary. We're mm -hmm. really focusing on Mary. Um, let me go back to where I was. The proclamation of a powerful promise had been given to Mary. She had accepted God's will for her life and was now about to begin a powerful and amazing journey that would change the course of her life and all mankind forever. I mean, that's the thing we think about. And Gary even mentioned this before. Um, you know, we look at like the big Billy Graham and Billy Sunday and uh, D.L. Moody and all them, but the thing about it is, and Jesus is a big deal, but Jesus needed an entrance into this world, and that was Mary. So Mary is, in fact, just as important in the story as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, in this story, what we've gone over so far, she's the key player. She's the one that, if she would have said no, which I don't believe Jesus or God would have picked somebody who would have said no in the first place. If he looked down through all of time and said, "Hey, I pick you," and the person says, "No," nah. I, uh, <laughs> I, really I have don't. to. I have to think that maybe the reason he picked a virgin is because a woman that had had given birth before might have said no. <laughs> Especially back then. Of course, but, it wouldn't have been as much of a miracle, but still, yeah. to say, "I ain't going through that again." <laughs> well, back then, you know, they'd have twenty kids and. You know, eight of them would live. So for him to so even true. actually live at, you know, through the birth and everything, it's still pretty. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> she did not um, present a long list of questions for Gabriel to answer, and she did not lose herself in her own logic. Mary did not begin reasoning away the possibility of everything the angel had just shared and revealed to her. Mary laid down her reasoning and picked up her revelation. I don't know if we're all always good at that. I, no. think, I think sometimes we let our own um, thoughts and our own logic mess up the miracle and the purpose of what God is trying to do in our lives. We really do. I mean, you can look at Abraham and Sarah and mm -hmm. you're like, you know, if we were in the same situation, we would have tried to help God too. I mean, we got to be completely honest here. Yeah. We've waited 25 years for this to happen. Uh, at that time, actually, about 20. And they don't know the future. They just know that God's promised. But I think it's easy for us, you know, when we read those stories to be judgmental uh, about them. You know, 
oh, what, what'd you do? Like, why'd you do that? But the thing is, is when they were living it, they mm -hmm. were not seeing the end result. We are reading it and we know the beginning and the end. Yep. And you know, when you're living it, it's just hard. It's hard to see the whole picture. You know, the old saying is the armchair quarterback or the Monday quarterback, or Monday preacher, you know, I would have done this or I would have done that. Well, you weren't up there at that moment having to make a decision. And yeah. honestly, the person doing it usually has the most experience out of the group. Yep. And, or anyway, it's their choice. It's their decision. And we've got to just, you know, put our faith in God, really, that everything is going to work out the way it's supposed to. Yep. And... I don't know if y'all are having lag time, but I am <laughs> severely. So, um, but hopefully everybody's okay. Yeah, well, we I was going through my uh, master's enrollment, and I had told the lady that we had just had a big storm, and our phones weren't working right. It was crazy. I was trying yep. to make a phone call on the regular phone, and it was like, nope. And then I tried on my cell phone, and it was like, nope. <laughs> Yep, and so we're, I hope y'all aren't having as many issues. I don't think it's, I think it's going through pretty well online. It's just not over the... My phone is working right. Yeah, so. All right. <clears throat> as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are a vessel with a purpose and a destiny. And when, I, when we say that, we mean every single one of you. That's not mm -hmm. just for me. That's not just for him um, or maybe two of you watching. It is everybody, everybody who is living, breathing on this planet. God has put you here uh, with a purpose and a destiny. Now, whether or not you walk that out, yeah, that's, that's up to you. But God has put you here for a purpose and a destiny. Uh, to accomplish your purpose, you, like Mary, must make yourself accessible. Mm -hmm. hmm, that sounds familiar. Accessible to his plan. Lay down your reasoning. Receive your revelation of what God desires to do in you and through you. Remember, God needs vessels in these last days that are clean, accessible, and able to take the heat. Yeah, and that's a big thing. We have to be able to give it over to God. and to let, Yes. I mean, yeah, it says we have to take the heat. And I'm like, you know, as long as we trust in God, it's just going to bring us closer to Him. Well, and uh, here in these last days, I mean, I really mean... It, we are feeling the heat turned up. I mean, just through the election, through this COVID mess, mm -hmm. you know, we are just seeing a total breakdown in morale in in our country, uh, let alone the world. And Jesus is coming. He is coming back. And so the heat is getting turned up. Satan is fighting even even harder to distract us and to keep us away from the purpose that God has for us. Yeah, I mean, that's all there is to it. This world is going to become Satan's playground at the end. And all we're trying to do right now is get the gospel out to as many people as possible. Yes. And, you know, sometimes it feels like an overwhelming task, but then you start looking at all the people that have, that are playing their part. Yeah. You know, we have missionaries who are going around the world. We are supposed to be giving from home and going into our own communities. Every time we leave the church, we're in the mission field. Yes. Hello, Mama. <laughs> so why must I lay aside my reasoning and logic? Oftentimes we look to our own understanding and our own talents and abilities when God gives us a task or we feel a call to follow him in a certain area of ministry. Sometimes we feel inadequate or unqualified for a list of reasons that are as unique and individual as we are. This will cause us to begin to reason away the calling or lay down our commitment to serve because we are basing everything on ourselves and our own logic or facts and circumstances surrounding our lives. This kind of reminds me of Gideon. Yeah. If you remember Gideon in the Bible, he was called to do something great, but he doubted it the whole way. Yep. But God still used him, and he needed proof over and over again. This, thus where we get the fleece, we fleece yeah. the Lord. Um, it, can, it comes from the story of Gideon. Um, and over and over, he wanted God to prove that what he had heard was, was what he was supposed to do. And, you know, sometimes what God is asking us to do, just like, that sounds so weird. Like, why would you want me to yep. do that? And God is not offended when we need him to, you know, confirm what he spoke. He doesn't get offended by that. No, I mean, why would he? He, 
he's answered the question so many times and he already knew you were going to ask. Yeah. And I'm like, we've, but that's one of those things that God has always told us, you know, you know, confirmation, that's easy enough. He can just put that with somebody and it will come. Sometimes it comes even if we don't ask. Yeah. So anyway, that just threw that in. God doesn't offend God to ask for confirmation. It <laughs> doesn't offend God to get mad I mean, at him. It's true. It's it's funny how little God gets offended and how much we get offended. Yeah, I mean the thing that really offends him is sin. Yes. And the only time in the Old Testament when he got really mad enough to kill everybody was when the sin persisted even after he told them to stop it. Yes, that's right. Mary could have laid down the revelation of what she had been told by Gabriel if she had gone down the path of her own understanding and reasoning. She, no doubt, was a faithful follower of God and knew the law and writings of the prophets of old. This would have made her familiar with the prophecies concerning the coming Messiah. She knew that the prophets said about him and the promise of his birth. Certainly, she would have had the knowledge that is prophesied that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem where and here she was in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. That alone would have been cause for argument if she had stepped into her reasoning rather than the revelation. And see, that's the thing I love about this because um, she wasn't in the right place mm -hmm. of the prophecy, but she didn't question that. And the thing is, is God may be asking you to do something and you're like, well, that's not even... There's nothing near me. I'm not even in the right place. But if God has told you something, he's going to get you there. Yep. Um, and it's funny because in my own life, you know, just recently, a few years ago, I felt God leading me to become a teacher. And I had no education. I had a homeschool diploma. Um, and when I applied for college, it, it that fell through. They're mm -hmm. like, well, your diploma is unaccredited. And so uh, here I felt like God had called me to something and I was standing in a place where I, I had to start all over. And I was yep. like, maybe I didn't hear from God. <laughs> God, <laughs> I was did. that really you? <laughs> I was like, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't what God had for me. But God was working in ways I could not understand. And he had a process and a miracle in the making for me. He loves to do that. Mm -hmm. To completely, I mean, like you were saying, Mary is in Nazareth. She's betrothed to uh, Joseph already. She's like, you know, I'm about to have start yep. my life as a wife and have kids anyway. And all of a sudden, everything gets sidelined. And so she goes after confirmation, really. Yeah. Because she goes for the one thing that she can really detect quickly, and that she goes over to visit Elizabeth. But the thing is, is, is even, even the confirmation came in... The promise. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, the, the angel, when he gave the message, he tells her that, you know, Elizabeth is pregnant as well. And it was confirmation of what he was already speaking over her. And so all she had to do was walk through it. And yeah, she went over there and, and it was everything the angel said was true. I wish God would do that to us, you know. <laughs> oh, you're going to go be a, you're going to be a teacher. You know, go over to this person and they'll confirm it. <laughs> you know, we don't get that all the time. We don't. We but, rarely ever but get that. But do we always ask for it? No. Of course, she didn't ask for it then. <laughs> no, but, but God, I mean, God was thinking ahead for her. Yeah. I mean, that just sort of put everything in perspective with her, though, yes. that God even made confirmation. The first thing she did after the conversation was, well, I'm going on a road trip. <laughs> and she didn't know that nine months later she was going to be in Bethlehem. That's true. I mean, she didn't. she knew that somewhere down the line... You know, the Messiah was supposed to come from Bethlehem, but she didn't know how or, you know. And what you want you happen. wonder if when that census thing came down, she was, there it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how God's doing it. And considering she had to go a hundred miles and she was pregnant and, you know, had to go around the Sea of Galilee, basically, to yep. get to Jerusalem and then beyond that to Bethlehem. Yep. I mean, Bethlehem is only about two and a half miles from Jerusalem. If Mary had stepped into reasoning, she would have begun imagining how all of the details of the proclamation given to her might unfold. This would lead her to feeling she had to plan it all out. She would begin yep. thinking of how she would have to help make it happen. 
She would have immediately started making plans for her move to Bethlehem. She would have written details of her well-scripted speech, attempting to explain to Joseph all that had been told to her by Gabriel. It would have included how they would have to relocate in order to be at the right place at the right time when the babe was born. Before she had finalized her to-do list, she would have begun doubting the reality of what had been proclaimed to her. The voice of her own thoughts in her mind would have immediately started to override the revelation of truth given by Gabriel. Yep. When we get lost in our own reasoning, we can feel overwhelmed and begin to feel that we have fulfilled the way of God in our own power and ability and make it happen ourselves. However, when we walk in our revelation of who he really is, we recognize he is completely capable of bringing to completion what he has promised. We don't have to work out the details. We just yield to his will and walk in revelation knowledge that our God is able to bring it to fulfillment. So we have got to not rely on us and continue to rely on him yep. to do what he said he was going to do. And even that's a hard thing to do too. Mm -hmm. I mean, to rely on God when you don't see anything, you know, that leap of faith. You know, we moved over here and because it was the only job that I could really find. Yes. And we're like, okay, God, you know, you're going to lead us into the church where we're supposed to be. And, yes. You know, we are big fans of praying one door. Mm -hmm. You know, God, only open one door. Let well, me... that kind of made us that way. Yeah. Because literally that's how it happened. That was the only door that opened. Uh, Gary had, had lost a job. He was looking for a job. Nothing was opening where we lived. And literally one door opened. Mm -hmm. I remember his sister called and said, hey... Uh, my, the company I, I work for is hiring. They want you, they want you bad enough that they're willing to pay for you to move over here. And it was like, okay, God, that's the only door yep, that's open. That's it. That's all we got. So. And, and then he moved and left me and the kids to finish school. And we're like, okay, where are we going to live? Yep. And we prayed and he started looking. And at the time, the oil field was in a boom. Mm -hmm. And when it's in a boom, you can't <laughs> find places to live. Nope. And literally... One door opened in Denver City, one little house that mm -hmm. was, it wasn't even ready yet. It was going to be ready by the time the kids were out of school. And yep. it was like, if you put down a deposit, you guys can move in. And it was like, okay, there's the one door. That's all we got. And then when we got here, <laughs> there was like, okay, what church do we go to? And we looked all around and we did. came back to here. And, and God opened one door. <laughs> After we had looked at all the other churches, we came here and, you know, before we left that one Sunday, um, Crystal was on the praise team and then when we came back the next Sunday and she was up about to start singing, uh, the pastor asked me to speak that night. Yep. <laughs> so, I'm like. So it's the one door. Yep. Remember the pots and pans in our kitchens don't have to do the planning and work out the details in order to get the results of a successful recipe. Yeah, I'm glad about that. <laughs> that is up to the chef. Mm -hmm. In God's house as his vessel, I don't have to plan it out or work out the details. I yield to the creator and trust something beautiful will come through my willing vessel in his perfect timing. I must simply walk in revelation and not my own understanding and yield to his perfect plan. <laughs> yes mom my open door became your open uh -huh. door because god had a a plan and a man for you out here what was it three years later uh mm, not even quite that yeah i'm like it's just like well yeah it was two years about two years later she moved out here and then mm -hmm. he not even a year later <laughs> Yeah, the one open door. It was for us. And it was meant for her too. You can be assured that when you yield yourself to his plan, the rewards of walking in obedience are greater than you can imagine. The joy of seeing others changed and strengthened through your obedience is such a powerful blessing. The rewards of your obedience are eternal for both you and the lives that are touched through you as, as you listen and obey to his commands. Mm -hmm. Um, like the pots and pans in our kitchen, we are all different. We all have various talents and personalities. We are all unique and individual creations of our Father. But regardless of our individual calling or talents, we have all one thing in common. We are all to build the kingdom. 
This is so true. This this refers to the Great Commission. Yep. Um, we're all called to the Great Commission no matter what you do. Um, you know, whatever is your part. And we were talking about the body of Christ. We're all part of the body of Christ. But every single part of the body of Christ is called to reach more to fill in the body. Yeah. And it's we're also supposed to reproduce ourselves. Yes. You know, it says sheep beget sheep, which means we're supposed to go out and bring in new Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, the shepherd's yes. not supposed to be the one growing the church. The congregation is. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we put too much on him or on the management in the church. And we need to actually take the responsibility to go out and get people, talk to people. Yes. You know, persuade people to come in. And that's one of the harder things to realize that, you know, not just because you don't go out into a foreign country, you're still a missionary. Yeah, it's true. And when we're talking about how God orders our steps... It doesn't matter if you're going to the grocery store, if you're going to work, if you're, you know, school, wherever. That yes. place where God's put you is your mission field. And, you know, I actually remember um, one time showing up at a, at a post office and I had worn two different shoes, which was weird because I'd never done that. I wasn't pregnant. Normally that's <laughs> something you do when you're pregnant. But I guess I just got dressed in the dark and didn't, didn't think about it. But that very item that I did caused a conversation that ended up being a witnessing tool. Mm -hmm. um, I was meant to wear those two different shoes and I was meant to talk to that person because God had set up an appointment that that person needed the Lord. Yep. And, uh, you know, God will use things like that. You, you think you just got up and got dressed and made a mistake and he's like, no, I'm setting you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm setting you up. So every little thing God can use in our lives, even mismatched shoes. <laughs> yep, I mean, that's the truth, though. Yes. Um, there are gifts and callings that are as unique and, and different as those called to walk in them. We're going to read uh, Romans 12, 3, and 8. So I got it here, Romans 12, 3, and 8. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of you has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, through many, form one body, and each member belongs to all of the others." We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in concordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If mm -hmm. it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So we are reminded in these scriptures that we are to serve God with spiritual gifts. It is also yep. crucial to note the very important instructions given in verse 3, that one is not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Um, you know, this is where we have to remember that across the board that we're all the same, that yep. we are all equal um, in Christ Jesus. Um, he doesn't pick favorites. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we have a different view of ourselves than God has of us. Yes. Because when you look at, you know, people around the area, people that you know, people that you know are in sin, you know, and this yep. is something that we, I had to, I really got convicted of last year was we think of ourselves higher than those other people, and that's not yes. the case. You know, we're all even. We're all the same. There's no one that's lower or higher than the other. And we see a perfect example of that when Jesus goes to lunch with um, Simeon. And the, the woman comes in and washes his feet with her tears and dries them with her hair. And he thinks, you know, if he was a prophet and knew who was touching him. Yes. And because Simeon was thinking he was higher than that lady. You know, it's never told who exactly it was. And we have to come to the realization every Christian sitting in the church is equal 
to every mm -hmm. center in the world. And we kind of went over this um, just this week. We're doing the one series in our youth. It's been really good. Mm -hmm. And um, the first week was One Creator God. And last week we covered one race, the human race. Yep. And I had pulled up a picture uh, and it just showed uh, a bunch of skeletons. There were, and, and each skeleton had a different label. But the point is, is no matter what you are, black, mm -hmm. white, Asian, uh, female, male, whatever, is that if you if you took everything off the surface, that we all look exactly the same. Yep. Um, you know, we all bleed red. We all have bones that make up our body. And the whole point is, we're all the same. And that's what this is saying, you know. And God, God does not see race or, um, he, he just sees us for who we are. And yep. we're all the same to him. We're his children, we're his creation. Yeah, and that's the obvious case. We were all created through Adam. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, again through um, Noah. But we have to come to the conclusion that we have to see the love of God given mm -hmm. for everyone. Yes. The crucifixion. We're talking about the conception of Jesus. He was conceived for the crucifixion. He was yes. conceived for the sacrifice. But until Jesus came on the scene, until Jesus came into the world... Life, human life was a commodity that could be sold. You know, it didn't matter yeah. to people. You weren't worth anything. And we see that when Jesus came on the scene, it completely changed the concept of what was going on. Yep. And it floored people that he put stock in people's lives. Well, he, bought, he brought a new revelation mm -hmm. to life. So this passage does not mean that we are to feel worthless or unimportant. Um, instead, it is teaching us that we should never feel more important, more deserving of salvation or favor from God based on our talents or gifts or callings. Our talents, gifts, and callings belong to God. He created us and gave them to us to benefit the entire body. We are all equal of equal worth in the eyes of God. And I, I kind of talked about this, that it was mind blowing to me uh, a few years ago. I got that revelation that my gifts were not for me, yep. that my gifts were for the body of Christ. And so if you are not operating in the gifts that God has given you, you are keeping something that is meant for the body. Yeah. That goes like we had talked about last week about when he fed the 5,000, it's not, just for you to hoard the gift that God's yes. given. And it's such an amazing thing that he gives us things for other people. Yes. You know, it's not like, oh, you get a gift from me. No, <laughs> you get to share something from me is really what it is. Because when you start talking about gift of prophecy and the gift of, you know, word of knowledge, those things are not for you at all. Yeah. They're for other people to help them. Even you get confirmation for somebody else. Yep. You know, you don't get confirmation and it's like, okay, that was just for me. No, you have to go <laughs> share that. And That's so true. We think about all the pre all the preachers. You know, if Billy Graham would have just sat down, oh, that's a good word, and wrote it down, and that's it. That's all you, that's as far as it went. You know, it would be completely different than what it is now. Yep. So remember in the introduction when we imagined our pots and pans in the kitchen having the ability to pick and choose what they did and when they served. The pots and pans don't have that responsibility or option, and in God's house the vessels do not choose either. God gives the talent and the calling, therefore we are never to take credit or glory. We use what he has given us to serve him and for the benefit of the entire body of Christ. So now we're going to go back to our scripture and we're going to read... Um, Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by 
every joint by what every joint supplies according to the effect, effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So we are to use the gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher for the equipping of the saints for the continued work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. We are to edify each other in the body of Christ and work to have unity in our faith. When we're not in unity in our faith, um, there's distractions. Yep. And the thing is, is, is if we're not in unity, we're working against each other. And the thing is, is when we're working against each other, people aren't getting saved. Now, the number four, verse 14 really puts it in perspective. It says, as a result, we are no longer children. And I'm like, if we look at what children do, they fight, they bicker back and forth. Oh, that's my toy. You can't <laughs> play with it. You know, I'm not doing this for you. You're doing this for me. You know, we have all of these things that are sitting there and... We're not supposed to be that way anymore. Yeah. There's a time where you are. When you first come to Christ, you don't understand everything. And, you know, there was a person who said, if you ever want to have a true prayer, somebody that's completely honest, go to a new convert or a child, and they will pray how it's, you know, what's on their mind. And we lose that. We think, oh, we have to pray these great prayers. No, we're supposed to come into the place so where true. we can be completely honest with God. Yes. And that if we are mad with him, which that happens, we can tell him. You know, yes. if things are going on in our lives where I don't know why this is happening, I don't know what's going on, I don't know how you're going to make this right, tell him that. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing about it is, is we are supposed to have a relationship with um with god that mm -hmm. we we don't we don't base this on anything but relationship and the thing is is just like me and gary have been married for 16 years we have a relationship with one another we have yep. three kids we have a relationship with our kids um my mom lives down the road for me i have a relationship with my mother and the thing is is in every single one of those areas i just mentioned my husband my kids my mother uh, we fought. <laughs> we haven't gotten along so at one point or another. And the thing is, is I didn't just quit talking to Gary because I was mad at him. Maybe I did for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. I needed to think it through. But, you know, we would fight. I would tell him, I'm mad. I don't like that you did this. You know, this, this aggravates me. He knows that. I say that to him all the time. You're aggravating me. Um, and the thing is, 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 it gives him an opportunity to say, well, this is why I do that, or I'm sorry you don't like it, or, you know, hey, maybe I can change this. And the thing about it is, is when we talk to God and we tell him, hey, I don't like this, it doesn't mean he's going to change anything, but maybe you'll get an understanding of why he did it. Maybe it'll change you. Yeah. Um, That's actually where fasting really comes yeah. in handy, because that way we can go, okay, God, I don't understand what's going on, but obviously yes. something in me needs to change. Yes. And this is the one part where you're going to really be annoyed because since God is perfect, it's going to be you that has to change. <laughs> to be completely honest. You know, in a relationship, worldly, yes. both of y'all can change. Yes. But when you're talking to a perfect one, you know, it's like, well, okay, yes. I understand it's but me. But the thing about <laughs> it is, is you may feel, you'll feel differently once you release mm -hmm. it. Um, I went through a, a time, you know, when my dad died, I didn't understand that. I was very angry with God, and I wasn't afraid to tell him. I was like, you know, I, I avoided him for a little bit because that's how I do. I'm, I get quiet. <laughs> Gary knows my, my system. When I get quiet, just leave me alone for a yeah, while. Just go away. <laughs> um, but I finally journaled it. That was the way I felt led to write it all out is I just wrote pages and pages of how I felt and how, you know, this wasn't right. I don't agree with this. And the thing is, is once I got it out there, there was a release for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it didn't change. My dad wasn't any more dead or, or he didn't come back to life just because I, I wrote it down in pages. Yep. But it, caught, it helped me to move forward and it helped me to forgive um, God, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't understand what was going on. Yeah, and we have, we have to realize, and this is something, especially with that instance, that was something really hard for us to realize, mm -hmm. is that when God does something, 
it is the best time for it. Yeah, it is. When you're talking, like I said, to someone who's perfect and <laughs> who can see everything, even though it looks like it is the worst possible timing, yep. it's exactly the time that would be was the best. I mean, you can look from the beginning of creation to the end, yep. and you couldn't have found another place where that would have been as good. So true. And so, you know, we... But God likes to prepare you before the things happen, even though you don't know the things are going to happen. It's so true. I mean, he could be preparing you when you were the age of five for something that's going to happen when you're 20 or 25. You know, he will prepare you in advance for those things that are coming. Well, and I go back and I, I remember just that summer after my dad died and even the first year, I just, I couldn't imagine moving on with life. And now here I am, it's going to be six years since he passed away mm -hmm. um, in just a couple of weeks. And I know for a fact that if my dad hadn't passed away, I wouldn't be enrolled in a master's program today. Yeah. I, I don't know if I, what I would have done, I would have done something differently because I wholeheartedly followed my dad's opinion. I, I honestly believe he's proud of me and he, if he was here, mm -hmm. he would have been proud of me. But I don't know if I would have had the same drive to do what I did. And it was all things in my life working together to get me to this point. Yeah. And so we have to we have to move forward with that. We have to believe that everything about our life has value in pushing us toward God's purpose and destiny. And we can't doubt. No. That's one of the you know, and we can't be certain either. I mean, that's no. actually the exact opposite of faith is certainty. Yeah. When you know what's going to happen. Well, when you're in heaven, you no longer operate in faith. Nope. And, you know, that's a great thing. Because <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in heaven and have to operate in faith. <laughs> but when you start looking at this world and how weird it is. So and how true. contrary to what. When you become a Christian. And you start walking in the faith that you know, you have a Lord and Savior, you start looking around this world and you're like, why did they do that? Yeah. You know, they are going, the way they think, the what they do is completely opposite of what you know to be yes. true. And it's so hard to understand this world because it's completely opposite of what you believe. Yes. And, you know, we see people all the time talking down about Christianity. And... You know, I guess when we were youngest, or when the youngest thing I can remember is, oh, it's a crutch for people who need something. I'm like, I need God. Yeah. I'm like, I, it's not a crutch, it's a life. Yeah. <laughs> like, if that's... you want to call it a crutch, fine, I need it. <laughs> and, you know, I don't believe that when we die, we go into nothing, as some atheists believe. You no, because for us, the Bible says to be uh, absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Yeah, and... I just don't believe that the consciousness we have came yep. from nothing. No. And it will return to nothing. Um, we're going to read 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 4. It says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit dis mm -hmm. distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them, and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between spirits. And to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of the one and the same Spirit and distributes them to each one just as he determines. The other thing is, is um, you being filled with the Spirit can operate any, any one of these gifts at one time or another. And you can operate um, Because multiple. it's all the same Spirit. That's, I mean, if you didn't mm -hmm. get that through that reading, the same Spirit. Um, it's the Spirit of God. This powerful passage reminds us of the diversity of gifts while also reminding us that we are to work in unity as one body. Um, I'm going to go back to Luke chapter 1. Sorry, I didn't have these more. And there's actually another gift that's not listed here, but it's listed in another chapter. And there are two. It's administration and helps. Mm. And I'm yeah. like, those things 
we don't even think about it a lot of times because we yeah. read this passage. But there are administrational gifts. Mm -hmm. And I, I so believe true. I operate in the one of helps because that's what I'm called to do. I'm supposed to help. And as sound men, I believe that's <laughs> and it, almost it's, everybody. It's funny. It was spoken to me recently as uh, having a, a gift of organization. Mm -hmm. And I never really thought about it, but I really am. It's a gift of, <laughs> of administration. It's very organized. I really am. Especially when it comes to keeping track of the busyness of our life. <laughs> I, I've, I've held it together. There's no other way that I could have uh, worked full-time, been a, been a full-time mother and wife, and gone to school full time if it weren't for the gifting of the Holy Spirit to do that. Yeah, and you know, we don't even think about that. We think, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we see all the ones that operate in the church and in the sanctuary usually. Yes. But when you start talking about administrative and helps, those are the ones that, you know, are constant every day. And you also realize that they'll, other gifts of the Spirit aren't just for the sanctuary. They're not just yes. for a church service. Yes. They're for every day. Yep. So um, Luke one thirty eight says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Um, as we read Luke one thirty eight, Mary accepted God's will for her life and immediately set her mind to walk in his purpose for her. Do you do that? Do you set your mind to walk in God's purpose for you? I don't always get that right. Um, perhaps God is calling you into a life of full-time ministry. Maybe you feel the call to teach. Yeah, that's me. Or preach the gospel. Possibly you have felt a pull to a foreign land to share the word as a missionary. You may feel God calling you to share a ministry responsibility with your spouse. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Whatever God is calling you to do, be assured he has already equipped you to be able to fulfill the responsibilities and duties of that call. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is called to a pulpit ministry. Most people aren't. I'm just going to say that right now. More, more ministry happens outside of the pulpit than in the pulpit. Yeah, but it's still ministry. Yes, we exactly. Can't, That's why I said more yeah. ministry is outside of the pulpit than inside. We can't just believe that what you see on Sunday mornings, all the ministry there is. Yes. Um, not all are called to teach or preach to a congregation in a church or classroom. But all of us are called to walk in obedience to the word and to share the truth of Jesus with our family, friends, and those we work with and live around. We are to live a life that exemplifies Christ to all we meet. Never underestimate the power or importance of the ministry God has entrusted you in this life. As a mother, I have felt that my most important ministry role in life has been to instill truth into our sons and live a life pleasing to God before them. And this is true for me. I'm reading from the author who has sons and I have daughters. Um, but I remember a time when that's all the ministry I felt. Yep. I was a stay-at-home mom and I felt like that's exactly where God wanted me to be at that time. And I did not move on from that until I felt a release that God was moving me into a different um, area of ministry in my life. But yet I'm still their mother and I still have that call on my life to be their mother and to do, you know, what needs to be done so that our girls, you know, walk in the ministry that God has for them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a very important thing as we train up the ones after yes. us. Yes, God has chosen you to let your light shine in darkness everywhere you go, where you work or attend school or in your neighborhood. Ministry opportunities are all around us. God needs yielded vessels to obey him in these last days and to reach the lost for him. It is so important that we yield ourselves to his plan for the benefit of the kingdom in these perilous times. But it is also a wonderful truth that when we are yielded to his plan, we also open ourselves to receive his promises as declared in the word. When Mary submitted her life to God's will, she opened the door to receive the promises that came as a result of obedience. Yep. Mary was accessible to the plan and will of God, and in doing so, she was available as a recipient of the promises and provisions of God for her life. Yep. The sinner does not understand the contentment in life of a committed Christian. 
the enemy would have them look at us as if they are in, if we are in bondage and cannot enjoy the life the world offers what they do not see is that we are set free from the sins that once entangled us we have liberty and enjoy genuine freedom through Christ when we walk in obedience to our father we choose life not death blessings not curses and like Mary we become heirs to his promises yep. and provision and that is a wonderful place to stop and you know that goes right back to Mary and accepting the gift. Yes. If we refuse it, God's not going to force it on us. So true. If we're not a willing vessel, then he's not going to give it. He's going to he will move to the next person. Yes. And that's one of the biggest things if you're not going to accept it, you know, if God, you haven't heard God lately, then you need to go back to the last thing that God yes. told you to do. Yes, so true. And that was such a good study today. I feel so uplifted. <laughs> um, we got a busy week ahead of us, so we probably won't be able to um, do another live till about Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll let you know. We'll we'll send out a shout out. Hey, we're about to go live. Uh, we'll we will yeah, probably be, yes. We will probably be trying to get notification at least about an hour before we go on, and maybe the day before. And if you can't watch us live, that's okay. Go back, catch up. <laughs> Uh, no harm done. And please still leave your comments. We still get them. Even if we're not live, we, yep. we receive the comments. We look back mm -hmm. often. Uh, if you have yes. any prayer requests, please send your prayer us. requests and praise reports. Um, yes. Uh, right now I have an unspoken prayer request. Can't talk about it. Um, the person uh, is not wanting it shared, but please pray. God will know exactly mm -hmm. what you're praying about. If you pray, um, with me about that. Um, and the thing is, there's no prayer request that's too small and nothing yes. that's too big. We have to realize who our God is yes. and that He is attached to us. He is emotionally connected with us. And what bothers us will bother Him. And we have to realize that the relationship is that close. Um. And we also want to say, I, I heard this old saying, don't put somebody down unless it's on a prayer list. <laughs> yep. So, and that's exactly how we believe. Well, Nate, we're glad this helped you today. I hope you feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about to pray. If you have been watching us and you have no idea what we're talking about or who that Jesus is, or maybe you've um, known Jesus in the past, but you've gone away from him, we are going to give you an opportunity to say a prayer and make Jesus the Lord of your life again, once and for all. You can mm -hmm. draw the line from this day forward and say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Uh, if that's you, I want you to repeat after me and pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that only you can forgive sins. I ask you to come into my heart, forgive my sins, and be the ruler of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for the love that you show me every day. I know now that eternal life is a gift given from you. I pray and ask that you be the Lord of my life. Lead me, guide me, and direct my path that I may walk each and every day with you. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer with us today, let us know. We want to know. Mm -hmm. And like we said, if you need a Bible, let us know. We can get one to you. Yeah. Any prayer requests, if you don't want everybody to know, you can private message us. Hey, Jose. Well, <laughs> if you caught the end, you can go back and watch the beginning. Yep. <laughs> so, but we're glad you, you tuned on. Tuned on. Tuned. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Well, so we'll we'll be back at you uh, Thursday or Friday, and we're going to continue. We're actually still in week one of yep. the lesson. It's been so good. There's been so much information. We've just been going through it slowly, taking in every word, every verse. Um, God is just so good. There's when there's so much information, you just got to let it yeah, happen. Yeah, I'm time. not worried about it. If we're in week one for the month, I don't know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll continue to come on. Um, Yep. About the same time, yep. if not a little earlier. Noon seems to be good for us right now through the summer. And like I said, if you're able to watch us during your lunch break, if you're at work, climb on, watch us. Um, if not, you know, watch us later. Leave your um, comments. We'll read them. 
and and just enjoy the study and we hope it grows you as it's growing us of course remember it's by linda holland yeah rhonda holland rhonda holland that's it rhonda, <laughs> rhonda. i was looking at the l's for some reason sorry but rhonda holland rhonda so if you want to you can get these books pathway press uh i believe sells them yep and so. there it's a good deal for a good word yes and, and she's got lots of them if you want to go ahead and purchase one and go back to the ones we've done in the past. Yeah, and you, can you can do through. that. You can follow us. We're also on YouTube. Um, we've been on there for over a year now. I haven't yep. got very many views on there, but we've gotten quite a few on Facebook. <laughs> Since we, we like doing this live, we really don't like doing the pre-recorded. Yeah. Uh, we may have to for the future, for when school we'll starts again. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but um, just keep us in prayer, and we'll keep y'all in prayer, and... We'll see you next time.